Okay, so I guess we can get started. Um, it's a pleasure to introduce our first speaker of our final day of this conference, Olivier Duda, who will be talking to us about McDonald polynomials and decomposition matrices of finite reductive groups. Thanks. So thanks very much for this invitation. I'm very honored to be part of this workshop. Uh, so I'm going to talk about um, a work in progress, with, which is uh, joint with uh, Raphael Rouquier. I should say Raphael Rouquier. at UCLA, uh, which um, aims at uh, trying to, to find a numerical invariance for a, a specific class of groups uh, which come from algebraic groups, so algebraic reductive groups over finite fields. Okay, so when I, when I decided to give this talk, I was uh, willing to focus more on the case of GLN and uh, GUN, so general linear and general unitary groups uh, over finite fields, but in the end, I think it would be more enlightening to, to try to give um, a talk in a, in a, maybe in a, for the, the most uh, general class of groups. So that way I'll, I'll try to convince you that what we have here are like, I will, I will try to illustrate many conjectures on examples to convince you that this, uh, even, even though we can't prove all these conjectures, uh, we still have hope that, uh, that they hold in general. All right, so the, the motivation is uh, Bruet's uh, abelian defect group conjecture. So if you've been, uh, if you remember at the end of the, the semester, you, you probably participated in the, uh, in the working seminar uh, and the first talks were about the conjecture. So you, you know a little bit about the flavor of the conjecture. So it's a conjecture about finite groups. So G, if you start with G, a finite group, uh, you have to fix uh, a prime number L and you're looking at uh, a silo uh, L subgroup. So the condition is that it has to be a billion. So a billion silo L subgroup of G. And it's a conjecture about the representation theory of uh, G over a field of positive characteristic L or over a local ring is ready to field of characteristic L. So for me, uh, I will work with just uh, an algebraic closure of FL. Uh, that might change during the talk, but while taking the conjecture, I'll, I'll stick to that, to that case. So the conjecture is about uh, comparing the representation theory of the group G. So it's module category, finitely generated module with uh, the module category for the normalizer of the silo whenever the silo is abelian. Okay, as you, as you might know that, I mean, if you have an abelian silo, then the normalizer uh, will control the, the L fusion of the group. And that means that in particular, the, the cohomology of this group G uh, over FL over K will be the same as the cohomology of this group. And if you're a representation theorist, you usually see the, the cohomology of a finite group as the group of self extension of the trivial representation. So that tells you something about the trivial representation and all its extensions. And you can, you can move a little bit further from the, from the trivial representation and consider uh, the block, which contains that representation. It's called the principal block. And you can try to compare these blocks. And uh, Bure's conjecture is that they should be derived equivalent. So let me maybe state it in this form that the derived uh, bounded categories of uh, the principal blocks for G and its normalizer should be uh, equivalent. Okay, so that's really a conjecture. So I should put uh, question marks here. So it's, it's been proven in quite a few cases, but um, for example, the, maybe the, the best achievement uh, towards that conjecture is uh, proved by Chong and Rouquier for symmetric groups and for finite uh, general linear groups. But we're still uh, in for like a general finite group. We're still uh, missing a way to produce uh, a functor from one category to the other. Okay. So, but that's if you take a general finite group or general finite single group. Okay. But for me, uh, a group is usually uh, comes usually from an algebraic group. So, if you're really interested in finite groups coming from uh, the theory of algebraic groups, 
say G, just a group of FQ points uh, of some algebraic reductive groups defined over FQ. So a finite reductive group. Then Boué further uh, conjecture that these uh, equivalences should be induced by uh, the cohomology of the linguistic varieties. So objects coming from the theory of the linguistic. So you should get natural, a natural functor. And actually for the purpose of my talk, it would be important uh, to mention that it's a family of functors that you will, that you will get, which come from the linguistic theory. So I will briefly define what uh, the varieties uh, that uh, will occur in this uh, geometric version of Boyle's conjecture, but uh, later in this talk. But I, I want first to um, give an example where uh, you actually don't have, uh, I mean, you have a Dirac equivalent, but you have something much stronger, it's much more rigid. You have a Morita equivalent. So let's start with the example well, the simplest example is the general linear group. So uh, as an algebraic group, but then I take uh, the, the usual uh, version of RFQ. So just invertible matrices with coefficient uh, in FQ. So this is uh, my finite group. So inside this algebraic group, I can consider uh, the maximal torus, uh, which is uh, given by the invertible diagonal matrices. Okay, it's defined over FQ and it's FQ point is just a, a product of a cyclic group like this. So it's an abelian group. Right, uh, so if I want uh, to work in the setting of Boyce conjecture, I need to consider C L subgroup of GLN. And here, uh, if I assume that L divides uh, Q minus one, so the order of this, uh, or if you will divide the order of this finite torus. And if I assume that L is not too small, so for example, if I don't want to be bothered, I can assume that L does not divide the order of the symmetric group. Then S, the C L subgroup will be contained in this algebraic torus and it will actually be just the L part of that uh, finite torus. Okay, so it's just a product of abelian cyclic groups uh, with the same order. So here, L to the R is the maximal power of L that divides Q minus one. So S uh, is a billion in that case. So Boe's conjecture should tell you that the block of GLN, the principal block of GLN of Q, should be derived equivalent to, to derived, equivalent to the block, the principal block of the normalizer of S which is here the same, it's really isomorphic to taking just the silo and extending by uh, the vial group. So here the symmetric group. Okay, but it's uh, even better here is what I said is that if you're really working in the case where L divides Q minus one, uh, you actually have a Morita equivalence. Okay. And it's, uh, it actually generalizes to any finite reductive group. So we will have that in that setting. So when L divides Q minus one, it's not too small. If you look at um, the principal block of uh, your finite group, it's Morita equivalent to something which would be uh, a silo contained in the maximally split torus uh, semi-direct the Vi group. Okay, so here you have to be a bit careful. The Vi group is really uh, the normalizer, but in the final group. So if you want, uh, like for example, if I was working with uh, uh, twisted A6, uh, the Vi group will be of type F4. Okay, so you have to be uh, a bit careful with the the FQ structure that, that you're considering, that will um, come later in the, in the talk. 
Okay, and the reason why here uh, you really get a Morita equivalence and not a derived equivalence is that you're working with uh, zero dimensional geometry, zero dimensional variety, you're really working with finite sets. And this is because you start uh, with, so here with a, a split torus, a torus that splits over FQ. So it's a zero dimensional variety which is involved. Okay, maybe I should at least say that this result is due to Pooch. Okay, uh, so why uh, I'm saying this? Uh, it's to introduce the, the family of the of the equivalents that will, uh, that will occur. So when I say it's a uh, zero dimensional variety involved, it's actually, uh, so just a finite set with the action of the group. So when you take the function on this set or the cohomology, if you want, you just get the permutation module. And I claim that this equivalence is somehow induced by uh, this permutation module. So G over B. So it's just a finite flag variety where B is a Borel, uh, which is also defined over FQ, which contains this uh, fixed maximal torus. Okay, so that's uh, gonna be actually This is going to be some zero dimensional the de linguistic de variety. Okay. And the reason why it works in this case, and it's like it really comes from the Morita, the theory of Morita equivalences. If you want to produce a Morita equivalence, you need to. Uh, to consider a nice module which are big enough to generate your category and whose endomorphism algebra are the, the target category. Okay, so here uh, it works because uh, if you look at the endomorphism algebra of this module for the, the action of the group, it's naturally just the function on the Vi group. Okay, so if I was working over any field, it's that the, the what should uh, show up is the Heke algebra, so some deformation. But since I'm working uh, in a very specific characteristic, L divides Q uh, plus one, maybe I should, L divides Q minus one, sorry. It's really the group algebra of the, of the, the, the Vi group that, uh, that shows up, okay? And you can see this, uh, this permutation module are just being some kind of uh, regular representation for the, for the group algebra. So you, you get, the simple modules in your block will be indexed by the representation of W. So over K or over C here, it doesn't matter because L is not too small. So you have simple modules indexed by uh, the representation of W and they all occur uh, with multiplicity equal to the di dimension of the representation. Okay, so this is just, a, these are just the simple modules in the principal block. And they are also called the unipotent characters uh, in the principal series. So they are part of uh, the set of unipotent characters that Jay mentioned yesterday. Okay, so if you're not really familiar with uh, uh, the linguistic theory, but rather with uh, really sheets on the algebraic group, you should really think at this this situation as being the same as considering the the Springer, the Springer shift in uh, Springer's theory, okay? Whose endomorphism algebra is also uh, the the group algebra of the Vi group. Okay, so this is something very similar, and it's uh, really the basis of of uh, Dunning and Lustig's constru construction for for the varieties. So let me say what there are these varieties. So I'm going to use uh, the diagram that Ji Wei uh, mentioned on was on Monday, the first talk. So he was uh, explaining how one could define uh, how Lustig uh, how Lustig defined character sheaves. So starting from uh, sheaves uh, on uh, the double flag variety or on, or B times B equivalent sheaves on on the algebraic group, you can pull them back here where the action is by conjugation here, and then push them forward to uh, G equivalent sheaves on G. And the image uh, 
uh, of uh, the sheets here, the constructs constructible sheets here uh, in here, uh, give you the unipotent character sheets. So the, the simple constit constituents are the, the unipotent character sheets. So if you want to do that, uh, these finite groups and define unipotent characters, you have to add uh, the FQ structure. So it's it's simple to to say it in this in this setting. So you assume that your group, your Borel subgroup, and your torus uh, are defined over FQ. You have uh, a Frobenius, which is attached to this, uh, these structures. And what you do instead of uh, considering conjugation by the, by the group, for example, here, or conjugation by the Borel, you twist the conjugation by the Frobenius. Okay, so it's the same as if you were just considering elements of the coset, GF. And you look at the usual uh, conjugation action, except that if you want to uh, conjugate by the element, or if you want to multiply by an element on the right, you have to apply the Frobenius to multiply on the right here uh, for the for the group. Okay, so that's the same as the F conjugation. But the the upshot of this construction is that uh, you act you end up with a space which is uh, homogeneous. You only have one orbit when you act by, by F conjugation because you start with something which is connected. So this is just uh, a point divided by uh, the stabilizer or fixator of, uh, of, of one point in the orbit. So for example, the point F, and this is uh, the finite group. So things which are fixed by, which centralize F in the algebraic group is the, the finite reductive group, okay? And the linguistic varieties, well, they're uh, given by, uh, so I'm not going to define them, but I'm, I'm going to define their cohomology. So here you have uh, objects that you can, um, so starting from the constant shift on uh, orbits uh, indexed by W, an element of the Vi group, you can extend them to uh, the whole variety and do this uh, pull back, push forward construction. And you end up with the cohomology of the corresponding the linguistic variety over K. So up to some shift here, depending on the, the dimension of the flag variety. But it doesn't, it doesn't really matter here. Okay, so to any element W, you can associate uh, the linguistic variety and its cohomology. And you can do, since here you have a convolution, or at least you have the Hecke category acting on, on, the, on, the, on the draft category of this one. You can take convolutions of sheaves and end up with things which are not just in the vi group but in the braid group. So really uh, positive braids in the in the with respect to this this vi group. So there's a, there are general constructions like this, and these are uh, things you need to consider uh, to get families of the Arabic equivalences for Boas conjecture. So let me state a more uh, precise version of the the conjecture. So I'm still working in this situation where L divides Q minus one and L is not too small. And Boué predicted that there is a derived equivalence between the principal blocks of the final group and the principal block of the normalizer of the silo, which again is just the L part of the split torus, or the maximally split torus uh, semi-direct divide group. And when I say induced by cohomology of the linguistic varieties, I can be more precise. And I can tell you which varieties one should consider. So inside the Vi group, you have the, the longest element, W. So if you take the square in the Vi group, of course, that's just uh, the identity, it's uh, an evolution. But if you consider it in the, in the bread group, it's uh, highly non-trivial. It's a central element, but not trivial. And this is the element that I'm considering and, and the power of, uh, uh, and powers of this uh, element here. Okay, so for N, E, Z. Okay, so that's uh, uh, the families, uh, somehow the families of derived equivalences that I want to consider in this talk. And we'll see also uh, analogs when L divides Q plus one, which is actually the aim of the, the, the like the project when we started with, with Graphel. Some remarks uh, about this conjecture. So I, 
I'm saying I, I looked at this specific case where L divides Q minus one. So what's important when you work with finite reductive groups is that really things are generic in Q. And if you look at representation theory of our field of, of characteristic L, it's really not L that matters, but uh, the cyclotomic power that the cyclotomic polynomial that it divides. So here it's Q minus one. Uh, so you can ask what happens uh, when it divides Q to the D minus one, D is minimal. Then instead of considering uh, this element, you have to consider uh, roots, diff roots of these elements. And for them to exist, you have to assume that D is a regular element. And in that case, uh, there were further conjectures by uh, Broué and Michel, which predicted that again, the linguistic varieties should induce the equivalence. Uh, there are further uh, conjectures about the properties of these equivalences. So somehow, uh, if you start playing with these varieties, I, I mean, already, if you try to compute the cohomology over the analytic uh, numbers, you see uh, some things happens, something happens. And uh, one of the refinement of the conjecture or maybe the question or observation is that this should be a perverse equivalence. So perverse equivalence is, uh, a specific type of derived equivalence that you can obtain by just by gluing shifted Morita equivalences. So basically, you will have a filtration and you will send a irreducible object to a shift of some other irreducible object, modulo things which lie in, in the smaller parts of the filtration. Okay, uh, let me maybe give you an example uh, of what, what one could get in that respect. So now I'm working, I will work over the allergic uh, numbers. So if I look at the, again, the permutation module, it still has the same decomposition as before, except that uh, now like this, the simple modules are really the unipotent uh, characters laying the principal series. And this is just like a fancy way to say this, it's just the cohomology of X of one. So really the equivalent of the, the Springer sheaf. Now, if I look at uh, what happens uh, when I consider the cohomology of W naught square, this is exactly the same thing, except that you have to shift each uh, isotypic component with respect to uh, like some number that depends on the character. So here, I think that's correct if I write it like this. And this is like a, a prototype of perverse equivalences. You're in the semi-simple case, so you have to send a simple to the shift of the simple. So a character to um, uh, you shifted unipotent character somehow, okay? So this is what happens for for this uh, W naught square, so that we expect this equivalence here, at least when n equals one, for example, to be perverse of this perversity. So that encodes really the shift that you have to do on the on the on the simple objects. Okay, uh, so why is it interesting to have perverse equivalences? I said that's one of the problem in Boas conjecture is that you cannot easily produce derived equivalences. But if you're working with perverse equivalences and finite dimensional algebra, you have algorithms to, to produce them. And I will uh, show you uh, one example. I think it's a simple, I mean, it's the only example that I, actually, I can actually compute by hand, the example of SL2. So, so you can uh, find uh, this example in Cedric's book, which I recommend, Cedric Buenafé's book about SL2 of Q. Uh, where he computes the cohomology of uh, some variety. So it's not, it's not exactly that example, but it's uh, the, same, uh, the same computation, so you'll see. So I start uh, with SL2, always this condition, and L is not too small, so L is uh, odd here. The normalizer is just uh, this dihedral group. It's representation theory over FL as only two irreducible uh, characters, the trivial, two irreducible representation, the trivial and the sign, which I would denote by epsilon, and the cost-winning representation for the finite group, you have 
uh, L, uh, K, L, Epsilon. And these are the trivial representation for, for SL2 and the Steinberg representation. Okay, and the perversity in that case, it's uh, zero for the trivial and two for the Steinberg. Okay, I said when you have, so if you give me, if you understand well enough the category uh, you start from, so here this group H, it's representation theory, it's quite easy to understand. It's a finite representation type. Uh, then you can, given a perversity, you can construct uh, a perverse equivalence. Uh, so, I'll, I won't explain how you do it, but I'll give you the, uh, uh, the explicit computation. So the, the simple, uh, the trivial module has a perversity zero. So you just send uh, the simple to the simple in degree zero, okay? And for the, the Steinberg or the sign, uh, has perversity two. So since we're looking at things which are I mean, the inverse equivalence here, I will look at perversity minus two. So you start with um, the sign representation and then uh, you try to, to cook up the, uh, the cohomology of, of a complex, which would be as big as possible, which we contain as many things as possible, which have a uh, lower perversity. So here perversity zero, you're allowed. And here perversity zero, uh, two, sorry, you cannot. Uh, and like this, you construct so here you're allowed to take this one because it has perversity uh, zero, but then you have to end uh, in degree zero here. So I'm not, I'm not giving too many details about that construction, but this is the complex that you get. And this is actually the cohomology of X of, uh, so S square here, so working of SL2 in characteristic L dividing Q minus one. So it's, it's interesting to see, so up to a shift. So it's interesting to see that uh, you get so this copy of the trivial that you get here and here come from uh, the torsion in the H3 of, the, of this variety. So you have a, some torsion which, which appear. And when you reduce mod L, you get the torsion here and in the previous common G group. So that's, that's a, an important phenomenon and that we still, uh, I mean, don't, don't understand it for these varieties when we try to compute the, the mod L cohomology. Okay, so that's the image of the, the simple. So these are complexes of representations. Uh, so you can look at their image in the Grotinic group. And if you do that, well, the simple goes to the simple and the sign goes to, so you have sign plus the, the trivial minus the trivial. So you just get the, the sign again. So you have the identity matrix here, which is something you, you, you would have expected for, for, for this group. So it's not really interesting, but uh, what you have here is a, is a natural grading given by uh, the radical series. So if I put this one in degree zero, then I'll get something zero, one, two, three, etc., up to L to the R minus one. So this is two, three, L to the R minus one, L to the R, L to the R plus one. And if I do that, then I'll get a different matrix because I'll get uh, one copy of uh, the sign, but with degree uh, L to the R plus one. And I get two copies of the trivial, one with degree one and with a minus sign because it appears in, in odd degree and one uh, here in degree L to the R. So I get T L to the R minus T. Okay, so of course, if T equals one, then you, you get the identity matrix, but it's important to see that you get some like a graded version of the, of the decomposition matrix, the grading coming from the, the, the radical series here. All right, so I said that Okay, it's nice to have these equivalences. You give me a perversity, I can, there is an algorithm to, to produce the image of simples or the image of projective modules and the, the actual derived equivalence. But if you want to do SL3, SL4 and so on, you'll see that it's, uh, it becomes very difficult, even though the, the structure of the, the normalizer is not 
not difficult to, to understand this, but like trying to really compute this, um, uh, this complex of, uh, of module, it's, it's really difficult in, in practice. So we need another way to do it. Uh, this is where the, the, the Hilbert scheme will, uh, will show up. So I, I will uh, no longer work with final group. I will, I will degenerate the situation to work uh, with uh, sheaves on some spaces. So to do that, first, like, so T sub L was just a product of a uh, cyclic group of the same order. So you can just see that as a truncated polynomial algebra. Okay, so you take a generator of the cyclic group, you remove one, that gives you a generator of this, of this polynomial algebra. Okay, so if, L to the R goes to infinity. So you would expect that this is just now a polynomial algebra, so S of B, semi-direct uh, W, so where V is just M copies of, of K. But that's not a good way uh, to look at uh, this, because uh, you will kill uh, many, many extensions. For example, that if you consider the cohomology of this, of this group, this is really not just a polynomial algebra, but you have a part that comes from the, the exterior algebra. So the, the, the way uh, to take the limit is to consider the symmetric algebra tensor the exterior algebra. Okay. So Raf, I mean, if you were asking Raphael, he will tell you uh, what's, I mean, why it's the correct way to do this. If you look at this, uh, this is the cohomology of some DG algebra. So this algebra with some differential that depends on L. And when L to the R goes to infinity, this differential will vanish and the cohomology would just be uh, this, uh, this algebra here. So that's really a degeneration of the, the final group situation. Okay, so let me look at the category of representation for this algebra. So this is not very symmetric. I have symmetric tensor exterior. So I'm going to symmetrize this a little bit applying causal duality. Okay, so it's a derived equivalence. And once I have this, uh, this is just uh, the coherent sheaves on some singular space here. Okay, and I even have uh, graded versions. So I have a bi-grading on symmetric and, and exterior. I have a, by grading here, and I have an action of, of two copies of GM here. Okay. Uh, so now I'm, I'm a little bit stuck if I work with any uh, Vi group, but I will consider from now on. And for this example, that I work with the symmetry group. Then in that case, this space here has uh, a nice resolution by the Hilbert scheme of, of C square. So this is just the set for the variety of ideals Cx, Y of length N. So I'm doing another uh, simplification. It's now I'm working with C. Okay, so that's, uh, so the resolution is particularly nice so that you actually get a derived equivalence between uh, the coherent sheet on the Hilbert's, uh, on this Hilbert scheme and uh, the coherent sheets on this, on this variety. Okay, this is where uh, uh, things will become different if you take uh, another Vi group and not the symmetric group. Okay. So why do uh, I gain when I play this, this game here? So remember that I was, I was considering derived equivalence between this one, I mean, this algebra here and this one here. And because there are Morita equivalent, this is the same as considering self-derived equivalences, so self or perverse self uh, equivalences of this algebra here, which degenerates to something like this. Okay, but on this uh, category, I have a way to construct uh, equivalence. I can tensor by 
some invertible uh, line bundle, and I get uh, I will get an equivalence which I can lift. Then in this category, so this is what I'm going to do here. So I will use uh, blue. I can tensor by tautological line bundle here, and if I do that, I'll get some uh, self-derived uh, equivalence on that category, which will even be bigraded. So this gives me a nabla, which will be uh, a self or derived self-equivalence. I don't know which direction I should say that. Of, of the generation of, the, of my block. So let's say that it's actually the same as my block. Well, just, uh, if I simplify a little bit the uh, things. Okay, and what are the properties of this, of this equivalence? So I said I wanted to construct, I mean, to understand some specific, I mean, some equivalence with a specific perversity here. And it turns out that if I do the construction and I tensor by this line bundle, I really get, which is already written, sorry, I really get uh, what I want is that this equivalence here, this is perverse with the good perversity that was given by uh, the Dunning linguistic varieties. And uh, the, the thing we gain here in this situation is that the equivalence now is, is computable because you're really just tensoring by some line bundle and then you're doing some, some, some derived equivalence. But at least at the level of the Grotting group, you can compute this NABLA. So the computation that I did by hand before on the example of SL2, I can actually easily recover it from uh, the theory of uh, Bergeron, Garcia, and Hallmann. Okay, so this is what I want to explain now. So I'll be, I'll be a bit quick uh, here uh, because it's like understanding the details are not, it's not very important for, the, for this talk. But what I want to say is that uh, really the, this, uh, when I say it's computable, it means in, in the Grotendi group of, uh, so either, uh, this category or this category that will have isomorphic grotting groups, then you can really compute um, the image of the of this equivalence on the basis of the simple objects. Okay, so I, yeah, let me let me just yeah let me just explain a little bit what happens here. So you're looking at I'm looking at coherent sheaves on the Hibbert scheme, which are equivalent for uh, the C star cross C star action. The fixed point, they are parameterized by partition, which is, which is good because I'm looking at representation of, of uh, GLN principal series, which are also uh, parameterized by partitions. Now, if you have a, a skyscraper sheaf uh, supported on that, uh, on that point or that fixed point, it will be a coherent sheaf on the Hilbert scheme, which will also be equivalent. And if you act, if you tensor by uh, line bordel, well, it's supported on the same point. So it means that at the level of the Hilbert scheme, the equivalence that you have is just, uh, it acts diagonally somehow on, uh, on the skyscraper sheaves supported on fixed points. Okay. And these objects, their image in the Grotini group are the McDonald polynomial. So it's a geometric construction of this, uh, of this polynomial. And this, is, this was proven by Hyman. Uh, as part of the uh, n factorial conjecture. Okay, so if I summarize, I'm looking at this category here and it's Grotten D group. Okay, so tensor by Q. So this is the same as uh, the space of symmetric functions uh, with uh, coefficients uh, in Laurent polynomials is with two variables, which account for the grading for this, the action of C star cross C star. In here, I have objects which are indexed by partition, which are skyscraper sheaves on fixed points. And their class in the Grotini group are the McDonald polynomials, which you see as symmetric functions with coefficients uh, in this uh, space of Laurent polynomials. 
Okay, so that's the part that we understand. Now going through all the derived equivalences that I mentioned before, you end up in the category which really looks like the representation of the final group, the normalizer of the silo, which is symmetric tensor exterior uh, semi-direct SN. Here, uh, what are the simple objects? If, you, if you're looking at grade module, it's just you're taking the trivial times the trivial times uh, some character of SN, okay? And what does it correspond to in the Grotten D group? Okay, usually it should be the show function. Okay, you're looking at a symmetric uh, character, irreducible character of the symmetric group. It corresponds to some partition, lambda. So the, the class in the symmetric function is just a sure uh, function. If you, like, if you look at the, the usual, um, usual isomorphism, usual identification. Okay, but when we play that game from, I mean, going from this category to this one, we applied causal duality. That means uh, the simple here would be sent to a projective. So this K will be sent to uh, S of V star which means that you should not consider just the show function that some statistic uh, transform with respect to the second variable, which is V here. Okay, so that's uh, a modified show function. Okay, so you have uh, on that category, you have NABLA that acts. Here you have tensoring by O of one. You know that tensoring by O of one is diagonal on this basis. Okay, you want to understand NABLA on that basis. So you just have to understand what happens when you go from the basis of McDonald polynomials to the basis of this uh, show functions. And this is, this is known, this has been known for a long time. Okay, so if I summarize, let me say it again. NABLA is diagonal, so really, when I say NABLA, it's really this tensoring by, by O of 1. It's diagonal in the basis of McDonald polynomials. Uh, this McDonald polynomials, they can be expressed uh, in the basis of modified for show functions, okay? Which means that uh, you can compute uh, known on the basis of irreducible representations of this algebra, graded representation. Okay, an example. So again, n over two, n sorry, n equals two was to consider is really the case. I'm still working with the symmetry group. So here I'm considering the case of SL2, for example or GL2 or PGL2, so very different. H, this matrix here is uh, my base change matrix between the McDonald polynomials and these true functions. So it's a triangular matrix which, uh, whose entries are polynomials in, in T and V, the variables of my gradings. D is the diagonal matrix, which is the eigenvalue of my operator NABLA on the McDonald polynomials. So here's just T and V. So if I want to understand uh, the matrix of, so not delta, but NABLA, I'm just doing a base change and I obtain uh, this matrix here, okay? So what does it has to do with uh, the computation that I did before? So call that for SL2. What we found was a matrix who had only one grading and it was something like this. Okay, so here how you go from this one to this one, but they're the same if V is evaluated at, so if you care for T to the power minus L to the R. Okay, so in the final group situation, I have only one variable in the degeneration, I have these two variables, but if I evaluate the second one uh, as uh, being a power of the first one, then I get back the uh, perverse equivalence or its like, value in the Grotten group, the one that I was looking for, okay? 
So this is, uh, I remember when we first did this uh, competition with Raphael, uh, I was not really convinced and um, like it's just a two by two matrix and you have many things you can do, uh, many flexibility on taking duals, koju on one side, the other side, considering symbols, projective objects, injectives and so on. It's only after, I don't know how many tried that we managed to identify these two matrices, okay? So it was not really convincing. The problem was we could not uh, compute things for large N uh, when the, the final group was involved uh, by hand, uh, because this is, like I, I give you an example, this is the kind of, uh, of matrix that you would get. So here, this is for, this is n equals uh, four, okay? So for SL4, you see this is the matrix of this operator Nabla. So it's uh, completely out of reach to, for the final group to compute complexes, which will have uh, these uh, values in the Grotini group. This is uh, really, really not, not doable. So it was really hard to, to check this, uh, this composition by hand, but still, uh, what you can observe on this, but at the moment this is still not very convincing what I wanna do, but what you can observe is that already when you specify the variables at one, you get back the identity matrix, which is the decomposition matrix of the principal block of GLN. If L divides Q minus one. So in, as far as the like numerical invariants for GLN are concerned or any group, when L divides Q minus one, this is the boring situation. I said it's, uh, you have more equivalences. So nothing is really, uh, really uh, interesting from that perspective. But here, if you add the variables, I mean, you get something which is highly non-trivial. Okay, so what are we gonna do with that? Uh, maybe first, uh, let me just uh, say something about the non-SN case, like the outside of the, of the SN case. What uh, seems to work as well? So you, don't, you no longer have the Hilbert scheme if you take any VI group. So for some of them, you will still have some nice symplectic resolution that you can use. So if you replace SN by any VI group, uh, you don't know what the underlying geometry is, but at the level of the, the numerical invariance, you can, you can do something like the space of symmetric function is just uh, the space of uh, characters of, of your group. Okay, and the, this platistic uh, transform show function. It's just uh, the, a character tensored by the uh, reflection representation of the, sorry, the symmetric power of the reflection representation, the dual. Okay, so here, this is in degree, to put this in degree zero, one zero, sorry. Okay, uh, something else that was used um, to compute this NABLA was Lustig's A function. compute the eigenvalue of this operator nabla that was related to the A function, which is also the, the perversity of the equivalences we, we are looking for. Okay, so that's, uh, so somehow uh, the geometry behind this uh, nabla outside of uh, complex reflection groups of type GD1N and maybe some other exceptions like G4 should not exist, but you can still uh, try to, define McDonald polynomials for these groups. And it seems to work. So let me give you an example. If you have uh, a group of type G2 and you want to understand the representation theory of G2 of Q, you'll start with uh, group of type G2 and the corresponding Hecker algebra with equal parameters. So here. Okay, and I get a matrix, matrix which is quite nice because you can see that you have uh, lots of zeros in this square and that correspond to characters which lie in the same family. Okay. 
So that's uh, already quite interesting. But you can do uh, something else. You can change the eigenvalues. So changing the a value means you're considering another uh, set of uh, parameters for uh, the Hecke algebra. So I'm looking at the parameters that correspond to a finite group of type uh, 3D4. And you also get uh, like zeros here, which correspond to things which are in the same family and polynomial entries. So something I should have mentioned is that when you do all this construction, it's really not clear if you don't have uh, some underlying geometry, it's really unclear why you get polynomials in your entry. You should get only rational functions. So that's, uh, that's the first, uh, first um, uh, surprising, surprising fact. Okay, so that's, uh, that gives you somehow um, a conjectural uh, construction for the perverse equivalence or the family of perverse equivalences arising from uh, occurring in Boas conjecture. But as I say, in terms of the representation theory of the group, it doesn't tell you uh, anything. So that's not very interesting. So let me talk about the consequences, which are the, like, uh, the interesting stuff in this, in this talk. So this is related to uh, Enola duality. So the equivalence I, I, I tried to explain was really like the effect on the linguistic variety was really multiplying by this W zero square, this W naught square in the, in, the, in the bread group. So you could uh, think that you can factor this, this one by multiplying only by a single copy of W naught, okay? And if you do that, you would think that you go, like you get some, somehow a square root of uh, this nabla uh, that, you can, that you can produce. But it's not uh, a good thing to do. If you try to do that, you will, you will fail. And uh, the correct answer is that you should not, when you're looking at the linguistic varieties, you should not look only at W, but really W with the Frobenius. So if you do that, and if you change, uh, W uh, to minus WF. So minus one might not be in the in the in the value group, but you can still somehow change the Frobenius by its opposites, uh, at least for its action on the roots. And this is you can write this as just W W zero times minus W zero F, and this is now a diagram automorphism. which means you uh, change the Frobenius into a different, ones, uh, a different one using this diagram automorphism. And the, and the group that you have to, to consider in the middle, this is really this group with respect to, to that Frobenius. And you should see it, this uh, fixed point under F prime as really being the same as uh, your group G, but uh, with respect to a field with minus Q element, okay? So for example, uh, for me, GLN of minus Q, so when I twist the Frobenius, you get the unitary group. E6, you get twisted E6, but things which have no non-trivial uh, diagram automorphism of order two, uh, well, they're, they, they're self-dual uh, for Enola duality. So for example, SP2N. Okay, so I have here uh, Nabla. So here I will get something in between, which is Enola and some, it's not really the same of Enola, some dual of Enola. And the question is, uh, does, does this, I mean, the first question is, does this E exist as a perverse equivalence? So with half perversity. So the answer should be yes. The problem is that you don't know what, I mean, if your target category will really be this group. So that's a, that's a problem. But still, um, you can play the game that we played before, looking only at things from a combinatorial perspective, a numerical perspective, things in the Grotin group. You can start with this, like the image of the, your equivalence in the Grotin group and trying to, to factor it, so take some kind of square root to get maybe not the equivalence, but its image in the Grotin group if it existed. 
okay? And you can do that in a unique way. So it's really similar to construction of, of, of cache journalistic bases. You have some kind of duality of, of object, which is self-dual somewhere. And if you impose some, some positivity con conditions, you'll get a unique factorization like this. Okay, so I think I have one example. Uh, no, not yet. And uh, what you get if you do this are properties of the principal block of uh, G. But now somehow you change Q to minus Q. So now L is dividing uh, Q plus one, which is a non-trivial situation, a situation with we well, well, which we, we usually don't, don't really understand. So the main conjecture that uh, we have with uh, Raphael to, I mean, for that, uh, that respect, I'm saying main in the, with respect to that numerical part. So if you, again, you assume that, so you assume now that L divides Q minus one, you look at this matrix E, which is computed uh, from a completely combinatorial way using this one, which comes from McDonald, uh, McDonald's polynomial. Well, this, uh, when you now forget about the grading, evaluate all the variables at one, you won't get uh, an identity matrix anymore, but really something non-trivial, which will be the decomposition matrix of uh, the principal block of your group. Okay, and this is, uh, you have to be a little bit careful, you have to change uh, the signs up to some signs, which come from the fact that the derived, the perverse equivalence that you're looking at, the perversity is no longer even, so there are some, some signs occurring. Yep. Okay, let's just finish. Uh, I will just take two minutes to, to show you some examples. So the first one, which was my running example, was SL2. So if you factor NABLA, you'll get this matrix for E, so you have to now you're encountering uh, square roots of, of T and V, but you can still evaluate them at, at one. And you have to compare with the decomposition matrix of the Enola dual of SL2, so SU2, where L divides Q plus, plus one, which is the matrix one, zero, one, and one. So you can see that it's really, you really obtain this one by uh, evaluating the variables at one here and changing this sign, which comes from the fact that the trivial and the sign have uh, not the same A value. One is zero, one is one, so you get a minus one somewhere. Okay, again, this is not very convincing. So let me, and I hope you will be convinced with all the examples that we'll uh, show you now. Let me do uh, now from GL6 to GU6. So I start with uh, GL6. I'm looking at the Vi group, which is uh, the symmetry group S6. So this is this really, uh, really, I have all the theory of McDonald polynomials and the Hebert scheme and so on. The decomposition matrix was already computed a few years ago uh, by Gunther Mahler and myself. So we really struggled on, on computing some numbers, for example, that column. So the methods that we use uh, algebraic, but also come from the linguistic theory. But here, you just uh, uh, like put everything in the computer and it produces this output and you can check that this is uh, really the same uh, matrix. Okay, so this is, so I started with GL6 and I obtained GU6, so GL of, of minus a few. So I can also obtain GL6. Now I have to start with GU6 but the Vi group has type B3 with unequal parameters for the Hecker algebra, Q and Q square. The decomposition matrix was uh, computed by James in 89. This is this one. And again, uh, you'll get this uh, matrix here. So it's not exactly the same because this row and column does not occur because it's not, it's not in the principal block. So uh, it's, it's removed from, uh, from this matrix and the corresponding column as well. Okay, so you would think that, I mean, GLN is somehow, at least for small numbers, it's just decomposition of the Q-show algebra, you have the LLT algorithm. But here you really get two variable decomposition numbers. And for example, for that entries, 
if you expand the polynomial, you will have 17 terms. So 17 terms, when you evaluate uh, the variables to one, you'll get one. So this is very uh, surprising. It cannot be a coincidence at that stage. Okay, let me continue on the examples. The orthogonal group S07. Uh, so the variable group has type uh, B3. So it's self uh, enola dual. So you use the same McDonald polynomials. Here it was B3. The McDonald polynomials depend only on the Vi group, but now I'm looking at equal parameters. So I get a different matrix. And since it's not the same here, you get only zeros and ones. And here I get entries equal to two, three, two, two here. And this matrix was computed in 2013 by Hunstedt and Nuschke. So the, the variables alpha and beta are, were, were computed by, by them. Okay, let me continue again. Let's try to do exceptional types. So F4. So I'm looking at McDonald polynomials for F4, which surprisingly seems to exist. This, uh, the corresponding decomposition matrix when, when L divides Q plus one, this is uh, this matrix here. And you can see that with Gunther, we struggle to find all the entries. Like there is a Z missing here, a Y, and this entry is corresponding to this cuspidal character. There's I mean, nothing we, we could do. But it's completely determined if we uh, use the conjecture that we have with Raphael. And for example, you could see that the Z has to be, so where is it? Has to be equal to two. So this is uh, this column here, for example. And some of the X's has to be, have to be zero. Okay, and again with F4, so F4 also occurs, but with unequal parameters when you want to do twisted D6. So we start with twisted D6 as Vi group F4 with parameters Q and Q square, and it's enola dual is E6. Okay, and the decomposition matrix of E6, at least one approximation was uh, that we computed with Gunther is this one. Again, we failed at finding everything and like where well, the dots here, we, we, we didn't know if the columns were indecomposable or not. And if you look at this matrix that you see that actually, so this one here is this one. So that means you could actually remove one copy, no, sorry, not this one, one copy of this column here, of this projective here. And it also gives you the values of D and what you can remove from that column. Okay, so I think, and if you, so I, I'm not, I'm not gonna, tell you what like the, the QT, the, like the TV matrices are in two variables, but you get again, like very large polynomials with many entries. So when you see uh, that uh, these two matrices match, uh, it cannot be a coincidence. I'll stop here, thanks. Thank you very much, Olivier, for the very cool talk. So are there any questions for all of you? I have a thousand, but I'll wait. That's it. Uh, you said earlier that, that uh, so after you did the computation for SL2, you said that uh, SL3 and SL4 are harder. And then you, you, you did a computation in, uh, uh, then you, you, sh you showed some, some hard computation on SL4, and then uh, you did G2. Shall I assume that SL3 is, uh, is, uh, is an easy done or, or like uh, rank two is, is done? For the earlier problem, I guess it was uh, it was it Sers Sers uh, example for SL three probably yeah probably SL three you could you could still do it by hand. Uh, Is it worthwhile? Is it worthwhile doing it for for the sake of uh, uh, better understanding this theory? No, I, I don't think so because you will not uh, if you look at the matrices you will not uh, you will not see any pattern unless you know a priori about McDonald's theory. It says, uh, uh, like if you, if you were only allowed to compute uh, some perverse equivalences on, on, on groups, uh, which are just a, uh, an abelian group extended by a reflection group acting on it, 
I'm not, I mean, you, you could do it and maybe a computer could do it for, for groups of small rank, but I don't think you'll get, uh, I mean, you could, you could go very far that you'll get a, a satisfactory answer. You'll get a, a matrix depending on the parameter, but then uh, trying to interpret the entries as something else will be, will be difficult. Like what, what we really wanted to do at like the, the starting point is really that for GLN, uh, you have the theory of Kyushu algebras and canonical bases, uh, which at least when L is not too small, allow you to compute a uh, deformed version of the decomposition numbers. And then from that, you, you have the actual decomposition numbers. So we wanted to have a similar, uh, similar combinatorics or similar results for other groups. And in particular for, for the unitary group. And this is uh, where we, we encounter this McDonald polynomials. Thank but you. that's like somehow that's the first step because we, uh, we start by uh, the case when L divides Q minus one, which is the, the boring case where things are multi-equivalent. And, and then we, we go to the L uh, dividing Q plus one case. So somehow we, we don't use any input on decomposition numbers before computing uh, decomposition numbers of the target group. So if we really want to have a, like a, a full result, we should mix things coming from uh, Lustig theory of canonical bases. Thank and you. This McDonald theory. Can I ask a question? Is it uh, Jordan? So, Jay, sorry, go ahead. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, is um, do you, so you recover? Do you? It, uh, is it clear from the matrix that it'll be um, unitriangular in this case? So you get another proof of the unitriangularity in this setting. Uh, yes, it's clear that it's unitriangular because the the definition of McDonald polynomials involve solving some system unitriangular system or triangular system at least. What's, what's unclear is why you get identity blocks on the diagonal. This I don't know. So to construct, to construct McDonald polynomials for SN, you use the, the dominance order. So you would think that for other groups, you will use orders on cash journalistic orders on families, but it doesn't work. You need a total order which respects the, the A function. If you ch change the order, you really change the McDonald polynomial, but you don't change the, the matrix NABLA. Which is the which is the matrix of the operator in some some base change. So this is this is something I don't understand at the moment. Okay, actually, maybe I just I want a follow up question. Uh, the uh, so you're always working with the big A function here, but somehow I would hope that the little A function might turn up somewhere. But is it just that the big A function? It's because of these. Perverse, it's this is what appears in all these perverse no, equivalence I mean, calculations. Both, both appears because you you have two, uh, you have the matrices in two variables, and somehow one accounts for the for the a function of small a function of one character, and one occurs for the a function of the dual, the Alvis Curtis dual. So ah right yeah yeah sure okay yeah so that's so both both occur at the same time. Okay okay okay. Um, Olivier, do I understand correctly that you kind of, so with your conjecture, you get two different predictions for SLN. Um, one kind of one comes from LL, LL, LLT and one comes from unequal parameter Hecker algebra. Or... Yes, yes, that's what we realized uh, not so long ago. So, but and you get uh, something in two variables. So it would be it would be interesting to com to compare like the one variable. Um, polynomials that you get from uh, the LLT algorithm and the two variable uh, that you obtain here. And it's, but it's only for, so it will be for Kyushu algebras uh, of S, so Kyushu algebras uh, at the square root of one at the moment. So, so yeah. So they, uh, because uh... because like like I said, I have to start with a situation where uh, somehow I'm, I'm considering Q equals one and then I change Q to minus Q, so it becomes minus one. And then I get a result for minus one. But I have to, so at the moment, I, I mean, it should be possible to go from, 
uh, like D to D over two or two D or when like for other other orders of 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 roots, depending on the parity of the the order. But at the moment, that's not something we've investigated. But yeah, but I think I mean, your question really makes sense, and I and I'm curious to to compare the two in that situation already. And so it's just totally unclear why they should be giving. I mean, yeah. it's unclear to me. <laughs> Maybe it's not unclear to Raphael. So no, I, I mean, if go on. I was just saying no. It's a yeah. It's it, we would probably need to experiment to make some experimentations to. I think at the end we probably get. Uh, um, for general root of unity, one should expect to have, uh, say, for GL, uh, two, um, a priori, two versions of QT decomposition numbers, uh, which should both uh, specialize to uh, to, um, to the LLT ones. Uh, that's probably what should uh, happen. So, so that's, yeah, that's strange. I mean, at the moment, the biggest uh, stumbling block is the fact that my uh, my Maple version is a free version that's, that, that I'm allowed to use only 15 days. And I have like three remaining days to do experiments. And then I don't know how to compare things anymore. So we'll see. Wait, so did I understand when you were, uh, maybe I had no idea what you were saying, but if you take other roots of full twists or powers of full twists, um, you're expecting that this corresponding twist of the of the group algebra to correspond to some other things at other roots of unity q. No, so what, what I what I'm saying is that if you let's say you start from a, a situation where you consider the third root of unity, this construction just uh, allows you to go from q to minus q. So you will go somehow you you will get a a situation where somehow you go from a block of a group. Uh, whose responsibility, I mean, a block of, for example, a, a block of uh, some algebra or some Hecke algebra uh, at the third root of unity to another one uh, at the sixth root of unity, something like this. But we not, I mean, this is, this is really, it, it's the same, it's a similar situation, but it's not a, a complete analog to uh, what you would do when you do uh, when you when you take roots of the full twists when you consider uh, wall crossing operators, you know, like the full full twist will be crossing at the wall one, and then this operator e it's not crossing at the wall at the wall uh, one over two. It is something something a little bit different. So there are, there are other things that we should understand is really what happens when you. Uh, really at the root of the full twist, but here it's just that uh, somehow we're looking at the square root of the full twist. But it's true that changing Q to, uh, I don't know, a full root of unity times Q should make sense, uh, especially in the theory of, of uh, Roy Malo Michel and Spetses. Um, so can you comment on the, so, <laughs> I mean, you're, you're doing all of this basically by using the full twist and, and diagonalizing the full twist. Um, but you're somehow using um, coefficients in uh, their, their finite characteristic coefficients. Um, and you're then specializing the homological degree to be some power of the um, greater degree. So are you expecting there to be some sort of extra differential you can put on the full twist and finite characteristic where if you conflate this differential then that sort of corresponds to the specialization that you're interested in but for, for the like at, at least at the local level it's really so what Raphael and, uh, and David Craven have have done it's uh, so when I say I'm considering this degeneration of the finite group situation you can really state it in terms of, of DG algebras the only thing which is unclear is uh, how how big you have to consider the characteristic for things to stabilize. So because I, I pass from characteristic L to characteristic zero at some point. And it's true that for when L is small and even not too small, you will have decomposition numbers which vary for the final group, which you will not see uh, from that perspective. But 
so I think Raphael and David have results on, on stability of, of uh, some of uh, these perverse equivalences for uh, when L, when L uh, gets bigger. It's not written up, but- I understand. Um, can I have something? Okay, so maybe it's a good time to uh, break. Think, let's uh, thank all of you again. Thank you. Okay.